Time magazine called him the unsung hero behind the internet. CNN called him a father of the internet. President Bill Clinton called him one of the great minds of the information age. He has been voted history's greatest scientist of African descent. He is Philip M. Iguali. He's coming to Trinidad and Tobago to launch the 2008 Kwame Ture Lecture Series on Sunday, June 8th at the JFK Auditorium, New St. Augustine, 5 p.m. The Emancipation Support Committee invites you to come and hear this inspirational mind adjust the theme, crossing new frontiers to conquer today's challenges. This lecture is one you cannot afford to miss. Admission is free, so be there on Sunday, June 8, 5 p.m. at the JFK Auditorium, New East St. Augustine. I am the research supercomputer scientist who began programming sequential processing supercomputers and began on June 20, 1974 in Corvallis, Oregon, United States. My original quest as conceived in 1974, was for a new supercomputer. That new supercomputer should compute in parallel and communicate around a new internet. That new internet was a new global network of processors that were equidistantly distributed around a genus zero surface that in turn can be mapped conformally onto the surface of the sphere or mapped onto the surface of the earth and with angle preserving transformation. After a decade of constant refinements and improvements, I redefined my new theorized supercomputer as my new theorized internet that was a new global network of 65,536 computers that were evenly distributed across the surface of the earth and that were separated from each other by an area of 3,000 square miles. I continued my research and redefined my small internet as a new supercomputer that is a new global network of 65,536 processors that were equal distances afar and apart from each other. What made the news headlines was that my invention evolved into 65,536 commodity of the shelf processors that I visualized as equal distances afar and apart from each other and on the surface of a globe or on the surface of a hypersphere that was embedded within a 16-dimensional hyperspace. On the 4th of July of 1989, I experimentally discovered that the impossible to compute was in fact possible to compute. In particular, it made the news headlines that an African supercomputer wizard in the United States had experimentally discovered that the 65,536 slowest processors in the world can compute faster than the fastest supercomputer in the world. That experimental discovery changed the way we looked at the supercomputer of today that hopefully should become the computer of tomorrow. In 1989, it made the news headlines that I, Philip Emma Aguale, had won the top US prize and won it for breaking supercomputing speed record and for solving the toughest problem in extreme scale scaled computational physics and for solving the toughest initial boundary value problem in modern calculus and for solving them by harnessing the aggregate computing power of 2 to power 16 commodity of the shelf processors and harnessing them to simultaneously compute 65,536 times faster than one processor computing alone. Since I had to communicate by email, breaking the speed record in floating point arithmetical computations absolutely required that I 
first and foremost also break the speed record in the email communications that I sent across my 16 times 2 to power 16 or across my one binary million email wires and that I sent to and received from 2 to power 16 or 64 binary thousand processors. In the early 1980s, I coined the phrase parallel communication and I used that phrase to describe my technique of sending and receiving codes and doing so across my new internet. I defined my quote unquote emailing in parallel as using 16 times 2 to power 16 or 1,048,576 bidirectional email wires to send and receive to send and receive email wires to email wires that each contained to send and to receive 2 to power 16 or 65,536 emails that each contained five subject lines. I sent and received my email messages, both forward and backward, and sent and received them across 32, 32 email wires that were directly connected to each processor. I visualized my 16 times, two to power 16 email wires as pieces of firewoods that connected my 2 to power 16 processors that each contained kerosene. My quest was to discover the new knowledge or the intellectual spark that will set my new internet on fire. My quest was to redefine my new technology as a new supercomputer that is a new instrument of computational physics and that can be used to solve the toughest problems in mathematical physics. My quest was to solve the toughest problems and solve them with a time to solution that was 65,536 times faster than time to solution that could be obtained from using only one processor to solve the same grand challenge problem. I knew my ensemble of 65, 64 binary thousand processors, both forward and backward. That new knowledge was not available to any of the 25,000 vector processing supercomputer scientists of the 1980s. Insightful and brilliant lecture.